Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our worship service for this Sunday, April 18th. I don't know if the weather knows that it's already past mid-April, but what a beautiful day we have to gather and worship together. And I'm assuming that everyone is far away because of the silkworms and, and not because of anything I said or did, right? <laughs> So next week when they're all gone, you're all going to be close again, right? All right, we'll, we'll take it. Y'all get to, to post up back there, and we're going to have an absolutely wonderful time of worship. As we begin our time together, I uh, just want to lift up a couple of announcements, and the, the first two of them are thank yous. Um, so first off, thank you to everyone, especially the soon-to-be Reverend Billy Roy, for uh, everyone who helped make sure that last week happened, it's it's such a, a, a blessing and a gift to pastors to know that you cannot be here for a Sunday and everything still happens and worship still happens and the church is still the church. Um, so thank you all so much for everything. And um, Billy, you can preach for me anytime, buddy. <laughs> and thank you as well to everyone who came out yesterday to help with the, the, the work day and, and cleaning up the grounds of the church. Uh, the, the outside looks so good, and y'all did such an amazing job. So thank you so much for everyone who came and helped out with that, especially to Pam, who helped coordinate everything. Pam, thank you for being such a wonderful leader and coordinator in that. And if you are looking for something to do, I'm sure Pam has a few more jobs that she would love to be able to assign to, to you. So next Saturday. Next Saturday, so um, go talk to Pam after the service, uh, or talk to me, and I will uh, happily connect you to her, and we will uh, we'll, we'll see what else we can do to prepare for our uh, movement back into the sanctuary. And uh, we are working toward that and making headway in that. We're still waiting for our 14-day decline in cases in the county, uh, which is our last benchmark that we need to meet. But we do have plans in place for when we will be back and what that will look like. Um, I, I have to have administrative council approve them, and then I get to share them with you, okay? Uh, but but we are are moving in that direction, and uh, we're we're excited to uh, be be back into our sanctuary and be able to to worship in that space again. Until then, though, we have this beautiful outdoor space that we will continue to use, and we will continue to gather, and we will continue to lift up our our praises to God. Uh, as, uh, as we do prepare for that time when we come back inside, we need your help with a, a couple things. We sent out this last week two different surveys, uh, and we're asking everyone in the church to, to fill them out if you can, uh, and every individual in the church to fill them out if you can, not just, uh, not just families. Um, the first one is about worship preferences and uh, you know what, where you are going to feel most comfortable and safe and um, the second is an anonymous survey on whether or not you've been vaccinated. Uh, just so we know kind of what we need to have in place to keep everyone safe as we do move back into worship. So if you can, please uh, look through your email and, and fill out those two surveys. If you did not receive that email for whatever reason, come talk to me after the service and I will happily make sure that it is sent to you. And uh, that way we can get as, as, as good of a response as possible for uh, our, our relaunch team to use in determining what needs to be in place when we do go back into worship. These are the announcements that we have. Uh, and now as we move into our time of worship, let us come to God in prayer. Good and gracious God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the love that this community has centered on your word, centered in our hearts. May we be present to your presence today. Thank you for life. Thank you for breath. Thank you for music. Thank you for this community. In your holy and wonderful name, we pray all these things. Amen. <laughs> Stand as you are able as we sing, Did You Feel the Mountains Tremble? Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ the risen Lord. Did you feel 
knew the people trembled. Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. We can see, we can see that God, you're moving the mighty river, a mighty river through the nations. Young and old will return to Jesus. Wide to heavenly gates, prepare the way of the risen Lord. Oh, open up the doors and let the music play. Let the streets resound with singing. Did you feel the darkness tremble and all the saints join in one song and all the streams flow as one river to wash away our broken ways? Here we see the God you move. Time of Jubilee is coming. Young and old will return to Jesus. Fling wide you heavenly gates. Prepare the way of the risen Lord. So open up the doors and let the music. Let the streets resound with singing. Songs that bring your hope and songs that bring your joy. Dancers who dance upon injustice. Did you feel the mountains? Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar when the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ the risen one? Amen. If you would please be seated as we move to our offertory prayer. And uh, during this time of prayer, we want to invite you to just take a moment and to ask God what your offering should be today. This is so much more than just the money that we place in our offering box in the back or uh, what we give uh, uh, online. This is absolutely about how we offer our very selves to our God. And so take a moment and ask today how God is calling you to be that touch point of the kingdom for other people. How God is calling you to be that which proves the resurrection in our world today. With that in mind, let us pray. Holy God, receive now the offering that we bring to you both that of our resources and, God, that of ourselves. Bless and multiply our gifts and use them in miraculous ways to bring your kingdom to this place. Receive our offering, Lord, we give to you, the one who has given everything to us, and the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
turn an ear to heaven and hear the noise inside. Stand with us as we sing. It's the sound of angels fall. The sound of angels songs. All this for a king. We could join in soon. All to Christ the King, how constant, how divine, this song of ours will rise. Oh, how constant, how divine, this love of ours will rise, will rise. Oh, praise. Oh, praise Him. He is holy. He is holy. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. He is holy. God, You are holy. So turn the gate to heaven and raise the joyous noise. The sound of salvation come, the sound of rescue ones, and all this for the king. Angels join in all for Christ our King. How infinite and sweet this love so rescuing. Oh, how infinitely sweet this great love that has redeemed. As one we say, Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. He is holy, God. You are holy. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. You are holy, God. Oh, sing hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, he is holy, God, you are holy, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. remain standing as you are able for our Apostles' Creed as we affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sing together our hymn of preparation.
seated. And if you would, let us pray together. Holy God, as we prepare our hearts to hear from your word and to meditate upon it, we ask that you would make it come alive for us today. Lord, may we hear something we never have before. May it spark within us a flame that will not be put out. And Lord, may we take our hearing of and meditating upon your gospel and go into the world to embody it. God bless the hearing and the speaking of your word. Please be praying in your name. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter 24. Verses 36 through 43. Uh, this story immediately follows the, the story of Emmaus, where Jesus appears to two of his disciples as they are leaving Jerusalem and going to the village of Emmaus. He appears to them and uh, makes himself known to them, but then disappears. And they run all the way back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples that they have seen the Lord. As they do so, they find out that Jesus has appeared to other disciples as well, and they are sharing these stories of how they have encountered the risen, resurrected Savior. And then this happens. So hear now this word of the Lord, this story of our Savior for us today. As they were speaking these things, Jesus appeared among them, saying, Peace be with you. But they were frightened and afraid because they thought that he was a ghost. So he said to them, why are you startled? Why is doubt rising in your hearts? Look at me. Look at my hands, my feet. Touch them. Does a ghost have flesh and bones like you see that I have? As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But seeing that they were still questioning and afraid, even in the midst of their happiness. He said to them, do you have anything to eat? And they brought to him a, 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 a piece of baked fish, taking it. He ate it. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In June of 2004, as I was uh, preparing for my, my junior year of high school, my dad went on his, his first overseas wartime deployment. This would be the, the first of three that he went on, and honestly, it was the first of three times that I... As I said goodbye, wondered if I would ever see my dad again. 
he was gone for about six months that first deployment, and we got to, to talk to him every once in a while by sending letters and waiting a week, and then uh, you know we'd uh, get the response back from him a week later. Or we would get the, the random call from a random number that we had to make sure we answered, and usually it was 2 a.m. over there, and it was you know just right at bedtime as, as we were going to sleep that he would wake up and, and, and call us. And uh, it, that, that was the only interaction that I had with my dad for about six months. And uh, he was supposed to come back in October of that year. But one day in September, in fact, I, I know exactly what day it was. it was. It was September 13th. As I was in physics class working on a, a, a worksheet, the door opened to our classroom. Now, I don't know how many of y'all uh, paid much attention to the, the comings and goings of people in, in your class when you were in high school. I definitely didn't because it was never for me. So I just kept working on my, my worksheet as, as I hear the door open until I hear the, the very next thing, which is a, a, a voice coming from the door that asks my teacher if, if he could borrow me. And I look up and, and there at the doorway, still in his BDUs as if he had just come off the plane and come straight to my physics class, was my dad. And I remember being just struck in awe. Like, how in the world could he be here? He's supposed to be in Iraq. There is no way that he is in my physics class right now. I couldn't get my, my brain to fully wrap itself around what, what my eyes had seen what my ears had heard. And so instead, I just sat there looking dumbstruck at my dad. And he just laughed at me. <laughs> Have you ever had an experience like that? Where your eyes see something, your ears hear something, but your brain can't wrap around the, the information that's coming to it. Where it takes just a few extra beats for what should be instantaneous to happen. And you're asked wondering, can this really be true? That's what the disciples experience in this story today. They have heard the good news that Jesus Christ is no longer dead, but is risen. Some of them have even experienced the risen Christ. And yet... And yet, they still find themselves asking, is it really possible? How could this be? Is he really alive? I mean, I know there have been multiple times where I do this with very earthly phenomena. I cannot imagine being in the disciples' shoes and trying to wrap my mind around this very otherworldly phenomenon. But Jesus, the risen Son of God, is really there with them. He's not part of their imagination. He's not an illusion. He's not a ghost, as they think. The very alive, very real Christ stands before them. And he tries to prove it to them. He says, look at me, touch me and see that I am really here. Does a ghost have flesh and bones? You can come and you can see that I am really here, embodied before you. And when that's not enough, he says, do you have anything to eat? He's giving them very grounded, very real, very ordinary and mundane things to, to use to to help their brains understand what is happening here. He proves his real presence to them with bodily, tactile, and grounding proof, which is just what they need. For as they see Jesus do the mundane act of eating a piece of baked fish, all of a sudden it clicks all of a sudden, it's real for them. Jesus is really there. For me, it, it, it wasn't 
seeing my dad or hearing his voice or him eating a piece of fish, because that would have been weird in the midst of school. It was, it was his smell. You see, uh, my dad for my entire life has used the same deodorant every single day. And that mixes with just his, his natural odors and it, 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 it creates a smell that is absolutely 100% just my dad. And as I, I ran from my desk to the door, toppling down my chair and probably others as well, and I hugged him, it was the smell that made everything click. My dad, whom I had not seen, heard, touched, or smelled in six months, was really, really there. Friends, 2,000 some odd years ago, salvation, embodied and risen salvation, proved himself as such to those who in the midst of their happiness were still questioning and afraid. Love stood among them and offered and solidified peace to them. And what's more, is Jesus still does this today for those who are questioning and afraid. It might seem a little unconventional in how Jesus does this, for as much as I wish Jesus would just appear before us and show us his hands and feet and eat fish before us, instead Jesus uses another means to prove salvation, to prove grace, to prove God is with us. Jesus uses us. Friends, we are the embodied proof of the resurrection. We are the embodied proof that sin does not have the last word, that death cannot hold us down. We are the ones who go out into the world and are that grounding touchstone of a, a, a presence that proves that there's more in the world than just the doom and gloom and destruction that we see too often. We are the proof that this world is desperate for, desperate to hear, to know, and to experience that good news, that the good news of Jesus Christ is true and is for them. That there's more to this world than just the death and violence that seems so prevalent, that there's more to this world than racism and xenophobia, than, than tribalism and selfishness, than isolation and loneliness, that in Jesus Christ, we receive more. We are the proof that this is true, and we are how the world hears this good news and comes to believe. So my friends, May we today prove true our risen Savior through our words and through our actions. May we, for those who are questioning and afraid, be the groundings, the touch points, the very embodiments of salvation and love. May we celebrate a God who is here, really here for us and for all. In the name of the one who is risen, the one who is salvation, the one who is here, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray together. Holy God, we thank you that to those who are questioning and afraid, you show up. You show up in what might may seem like unconventional forms at times, but God, you prove yourself real in this world. So Lord, prove yourself to us that we might experience you and that we might go and share with the world the truth that you, our God, our salvation, love incarnate, you are risen. In your name we pray.
Amen. Amen. Now hear this benediction. Go from this place as a people, even in the midst of our happiness, who might still be questioning and afraid. Go as a people who have seen the Lord, who know that proof that God is risen because we embody that proof for ourselves and for the world. Go sharing this message of love, this message of grace, this message of salvation with the world. And go be that touch point, that grounding, that embodiment that those around you need. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand with us and sing one more time, surely the presence. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.